So we have new big stories out today from John Bolton's book, which just came out or is about to come out. Um, This one is reported in The Hill. President Trump solicited President Xi Jinping's assistance in winning re-election, according to a forthcoming book from former White House National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton describes an exchange that took place at the Group of 20 G20 Summit in June in his new book, The Room Where It Happened. During the exchange with Trump, Xi referenced unnamed American political figures who were too critical of Beijing and were threatening the U.S.-China relationship. Whether Xi meant to finger the... Democrats or some of us sitting on the U.S. side of the table, I don't know, but Trump immediately assumed that she meant the Democrats, Bolton wrote, according to an excerpt uh, of the book published in the Wall Street Journal. Trump said approvingly that there was great hostility to China among the Democrats. Trump then stunningly turned the conversation to the coming U.S. presidential election, alluding to China's economic uh, capability and pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. Bolton wrote, He stressed the importance of farmers and increased Chinese purchase of soybeans and wheat in the electoral outcome. I would print Trump's exact words, but the government's pre-publication review process has decided otherwise. Okay, so um, I'm not buying what Bolton is saying here. I, at the very least, I think he's misconstruing it or exaggerating it. If Trump ended up saying that last part, And that last part is, hey, listen, China, we want you to, you know, buy more goods from us. We want you to, whatever it is, soybeans, get soybeans from our amazing, tremendous farmers. They're so wonderful. They're so special. I'd love it if we could do more business. I'd love it if instead of importing everything that you build, you took some of what we ship out of our country, our lovely, beautiful country. I think that part rings true to me that Trump would say something like that, but as I read that, I go, that's the job of the president. Like, if you have a U.S. president, they're supposed to represent U.S. interests, and they're supposed to... So what he's trying to do here is have the U.S. export more goods to China, because that would nominally be good for the economy and for our workers and for our companies. So I read that, and I go, I, that's... Any president would do, would do that. Or if they're a president that's doing their job, they would do that. I, you know, I think it's a good thing if, we're, if we export a lot of goods and it's good for our economy. It's good for production here. So I'm sure there's some presidents who don't care about that, but Trump seemingly does care about that, at least in the context of he cares about getting reelected. So he wants, he wants more U.S. exports because he thinks that helps in the process of him getting reelected. But... John Bolton is making it seem like Trump said, okay, so China, you're going to hack the voting booths, right? He, okay, but I highly, highly, highly doubt. I know Trump is dumb. I think there's basically a 0% chance that Trump was like, so President Xi, listen, I need your help in the upcoming re-election and whatever you can do to help, I really appreciate it. It seems like his point was, hey, Um, yes, there are other people who are more hawkish and more anti-China than me, and I want to do business with you, I want to outsource U.S. products to you, and if you buy those U.S. products, then it's going to be good for you in the long run, because then I'll get reelected, and then we'll continue to have a business relationship. Now, there are criticisms there, like, I think, it's funny, because publicly he does this, you know, I'm tough on China thing, where he acts like, um... You know, I'm going to do protectionism and tariffs and I'm going to stand up to them because they've been taking advantage of us for too long. And then I don't doubt that when he's in meetings with them, that tune changes and it's a lot more conciliatory and it's a lot more negotiation and it's a lot more let's do things that are mutually beneficial. I'm sure that's the case. But the idea that Bolton's getting out here that he's trying to make Russia gate China gate, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to say, oh, just like he wanted Russia and Vladimir Putin to steal the election for him, and Trump would be a Manchurian candidate of Vladimir Putin, he did the same thing with China. He's trying, he's trying to get them to help him with his re-election, but John, if the, if the thing that he's doing to try to get help for his re-election is increase U.S. exports, that is categorically different than asking somebody to hack into voting machines and change the votes or whatever, and... Even according to your account, he didn't say that, but you're implying that he did. And then, they, you know, he says, oh, the government's stopping me from telling the whole truth. By the way, John Bolton wanted Chelsea Manning executed, executed for releasing classified information. And then in this book, John Bolton releases 
classified information. Now, listen, I'm consistent. I think John Bolton has every right to write this book. And I obviously support Chelsea Manning, and I support Julian Assange, and I support Edward Snowden, and I support, support whistleblowers. I support transparency in government, so I'm totally fine with John Bolton writing this book. But you're a sucker if you believe every word of this book. He's a notorious liar. He, this is the guy who lied us into the Iraq war, and now I'm supposed to believe when he writes an anti-Trump book that every word he's saying is the truth? I highly doubt it. Again, some things are probably true. I would guess that probably most things are false, or at the very least, they're half-truths that he spins for his own political ends. Now, this gets to the main question. Why is he writing an anti-Trump book? I don't think it all comes down to they just had personality clashes and disagreements on that front. No. I think the main reason why he wrote this book is because John Bolton wanted Trump to be way, way, way more hawkish than he is. And Trump wasn't. Now, Trump is still a hawk. Don't get it twisted. He is still a hawk. But there was some good reporting that came out about how, and in the book he even admits this, he says his biggest disagreement with Trump was when Trump called off an attack on Iran at the last minute. Now, ultimately, Trump did do an attack and killed Qasem Soleimani, uh, the general, but, and I'm against that. That was terrible. I think it was one of the worst things Trump did, and it could have sparked, beyond an international crisis, it could have sparked another giant war. But there was a time before that, like a month or so before that, where they had the intelligence that they knew where Soleimani was, but there would have been like a dozen Ir Iranian soldiers who died along with Soleimani. So Trump was going to do it. And then, then at the last minute, he said, I'm calling her off. I don't want to do it. John Bolton says, my biggest disagreement with Trump was that he didn't pull the trigger then. Was that he didn't. And Trump's reasoning was, I don't want to kill the 12 other Iranian soldiers because then I think there's a very good chance that we go to war. So... John Bolton, his main issue with Trump is that Donald Trump wasn't hawkish enough. Donald Trump increased drone strikes 432%. That's not enough for him. Donald Trump ripped up the Iran deal. That's not enough for him. Donald Trump keeps sanctioning Venezuela like crazy to the point where the civilians, the citizens, are getting absolutely obliterated. That's not enough for him. Donald Trump continues Iraq and Afghanistan and keeps the status quo going, keeps bombing eight different countries. That's not enough for Bolton. What does Bolton want? He wants an actual hot war against Venezuela, and he wants a hot war against Iran, and he wanted, you know, North Korea as well. This guy's never been a war he didn't like. He hated the fact that Trump actually did diplomacy with North Korea. And so, the hawk's hawk, the biggest neocon in the country, was part of the Trump administration, and the reason why he doesn't like Trump is because Trump wasn't hawkish enough. And so that's why he's writing this book, because... He is, for all of his flaws, John Bolton, you bet your ass he's an ideologue. And he's an American exceptionalist and a neoconservative to his core. He believes it like a fundamentalist religion. He thinks we run the world. He thinks we should run the world. He thinks we should be the, the international bully. Okay, that's what he thinks. So that's where the I think the heart of their disagreement comes from. There could also be some personality clashes. I don't deny that at all. But the fact that that guy, whose main position and main gripe is... Trump didn't do enough war. The fact that that guy's telling me all these terrible things about Trump makes me go, eh, you lied us into the Iraq war. You're a known liar. You're a known psychopathic, bloodthirsty war criminal. I'm not buying what you're saying. Again, I'll look through the book and, and I think you do have to go on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of the criticisms of Trump ring kind of true, um, but a lot of this stuff seems like giant stretches. A lot of this stuff seems totally made up to me. And... Like, the claim that he's trying to make here, he's implying that Trump is, just like with Russiagate, where he was doing Vladimir Putin's bidding, even though he wasn't, oh, now there's Chinagate, and, you know, Trump was asking for help with this election. Well, no, it sounds like what he was asking for was to increase U.S. exports, and you're spinning that as like, oh my god, this is so obscene and not right. Again, because he's the biggest hawk of them all. He also doesn't want to have, you know, he also wants to be hawkish and aggressive with China, this guy would get us in World War III in an instant if he was really running the show, John Bolden. And I think his, he's angry at Trump specifically because he wasn't hawkish enough. So, again, my main point here is you have to take everything he says with a grain of salt because he's a war criminal. Okay? He's a war criminal. He's a known proven liar. And just because you don't like Trump and Trump's a liar doesn't mean that everything Bolton says is automatically true. And I have to say, there are a lot of people who are 
just buying this hook, line, and sinker, and it's driving me crazy. Like, are you guys forgetting everything about John Bolden? John Bolden, there's few people in this world, in this country, who are worse than Donald Trump. I'm very comfortable saying John Bolden is way worse than Trump. So for everybody who's taking this because they get to burn Trump, it's just so sad. Like, use your brain a little bit. It, obviously, everything he's saying is not true. This guy has no scruples, no morals. So anyway... Uh, I'm not buying this claim. There's a bunch of claims I'm not buying. Some of them ring true, but um, ultimately I think this is a stretch. Now, Trump and the Department of Justice are trying to stop the book because they're saying, oh my God, there's classified information. It's, I hate the way that Washington works because anytime there's something that they want to leak, if it's classified information, they're like, yeah, here, we'll leak it because it makes us look good. Have a field day, press. If there's stuff that they don't like about them and it gets leaked, oh my God, they'll throw the book at you. Again, look at Chelsea Manning, look at Julian Assange, look at Edward Snowden. Look, If you embarrass them, oh my God, then they'll throw the book at you. So it looks like Trump will probably throw the book at Bolton. Now, I think both things are true at the same time. That Bolton has every right to write this book, okay? And I, I think there should be no legal penalty for that at all. The government should not go after him at all. But I also think at the same time that a lot of the stuff, probably most of the stuff in the book is complete BS. Both of those things can be true at the same time. He has a legal right to publish this and the government should have no standing to come after him because that would violate freedom of speech. And I believe in government transparency, so I think it's a good thing. But at the same time, I think it's mostly BS. I think both those things are true. And unfortunately, I don't think that uh, many people are going to have that position that I just explained.